We are honored to be joined once again by uh, Tara Daldell, who is founder and president of the TGD Speakers and Tara Daldell Group. Good to see you, Tara. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me again. Well, you know, I want to talk specifically about this particular initiative. Um, we've collaborated with the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, Tim Sullivan and the team there. There is an initiative they're involved in with you and a couple of other organizations, three organizations that will enhance the effort to aid minority women and veteran-owned businesses. Talk about it and why it's so especially important right now. So this is really uh, exciting work, and we're happy to be a partner with the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. So the New Jersey Economic Development Authority has been rolling out a lot of funding programs to support our small businesses across New Jersey, and they're focusing on 25 employees or fewer, and they are also prioritizing women-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses. And why this is important is what has happened from a policy perspective with a lot of the programs that have existed, PPP, is it's you're asking businesses with five employees, 10 employees, to compete against a business with 400 employees. And so what these programs are designed to really help the businesses who need it the most, who are often locked out of these larger programs at the federal level. And so it's been really exciting. And then the emphasis on ensuring that we reach you know, the minority businesses, the, the women-owned businesses, these aren't businesses that don't work hard. These aren't businesses that don't contribute. They, these are businesses that revitalize some of our, our distressed communities. These are businesses that, that employ people who might not otherwise have an opportunity. These are businesses that add value, healthcare, education, et cetera. Sure. And so ensuring that they are, 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 are valued and are given that access in a way that's usually reserved for larger businesses is really something tremendous uh, that the state's doing and, and we're helping to market. So Tara, I'm gonna be clear, is the Economic Development Authority providing loans, grants, what? So it's, it's an array. So they have some grant funding. So the most recent program that they undertook were grants up to $10,000. So they did not have to be repaid. And they're also rolling out some loan programs that are uh, forthcoming, again, uh, focusing on the, the, the micro businesses, the true small businesses. And that's where you actually get the growth from. Uh, a lot of people think that the, the bigger companies is where the growth comes from. It's actually these smaller businesses. So the fact that we're having public policy really um, focused there, it's, it's good for all New Jerseyans. And so uh, they've engaged myself and they've engaged other um, two other agencies, uh, women-owned, minority-owned agencies to do this outreach to ensure that it's done in a way that's very inclusive. I want to clarify. So it's 360 marketing and PR. Yes. And also Medina equals city. Is that right? Yes. Medina equals city, which is located in, in Newark, the, um, my agency in Jersey City. And then in Camden, 360 marketing and PR is located in Camden. So we've really covered the state. Absolutely. Tara, let me follow up on this. It's interesting to me. So our not-for-profit production company, the Caucus Educational Corporation, affected by COVID-19 in terms of uh, sponsorship, in terms of the way we're broadcasting, um, not in the studio, et cetera. But also, you know that I do leadership development, communication uh, training, et cetera, in my other life. And that business is affected, hurt, changed, et cetera. However, in, in listening to you, what I want to follow up on is this. So I'm affected, you're affected with your business. Other women in minority-owned businesses, veterans affected as well. Do you believe with COVID-19 to date, as we tape this in mid-July, that you're affected differently and worse? Uh, yes, I do. I do think there is a disparity. Um, and, and because, first of all, we already know from a health standpoint that's right. That myself as a Black American, I'm more vulnerable. You know, we are we are uh, social determinants. Excuse me for up Social determinants of health. Um, again, something Micheline Davis has talked to us about and others. But that's a piece of just that's the health equation. Go ahead. Right. But I have to be more careful, right? I have to be as 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 a as a Black woman. I mean, even infant mortality, the the maternal mortality rate. That's another big issue. I'm I'm despite and all of these issues. Remember, for Black for Black Americans, it actually supersedes whether you uh, what your income level is, your level of education, what neighborhood you live in, how great the hospital is in that neighborhood. There is something you know we are 
uh, that we're less likely to be given as much pain medication. There's a lot of issues there. There's bias within our healthcare system and the data ba bears it out. So I have that concern to worry about. I have an immunocompromised mother. So I have that concern to worry about. And then on top of it, I'm already in a good environment. I am already, I have my, my, my value as a business is often just, I'm subjected to, we see it, it's, it's equal pay, right? I'm subjected to that as, a, as an owner, right? In the same way that I, as a woman, just a woman period, I have to deal with the headwinds of, of people wanting to pay me less. When you add the fact that I am a black American on there and that so many people have internalized stereotypes and then they project those stereotypes, that's, that, that comes to the negotiating table every time I sit down. Just because you, I offer a service with our communications company, you offer a service, same service. You offer the same, if not better quality. You're likely to be paid less. I am likely to be paid less and the data bears it out. I mean, if you look at even angel investors, right? This is why yes. this funding that the, the, the state and that the NJEDA is doing and that Governor Murphy is doing, this is why it's so important. You look at, you know, the access to capital piece. I mean, there are so many black women owned businesses who can come to the table and they, they did a test. They had tests. They tested the banks in California. It was a big uh, study that was done and they sent people in with equal qualifications and some were slightly better and the black businesses were not likely to get the loans despite having equal or better qualifications. That's, like business, redlining. That's yeah. like business redlining. Right. And they bore it. The testers went in, and this is what the data showed. You can't argue with the fact that they that this was an experiment that was done. Equal equal uh, qualifications. They even bumped some of the black business owners' qualifications up, and this is what the testers came out with. Wow. So once again, this EDA New Jersey Economic Development Authority. That's an important initiative that uh, is in fact looking to help women minority-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses that have been impacted by the coronavirus and well beyond. Uh, Tara, as always, thank you for being with us. Thank you for educating us, inspiring us, and frankly, challenging us because we must do better. We have to keep trying to do better um, and keep doing the work you're doing in the media. We see you nationally as well on MSNBC and other places. Tara, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Steve Adubato. Thank you for spotlighting, Steve. You got, sorry for interrupting. Catch you next time, folks. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey Board of Public Utilities, Clean Energy Program, the New Jersey Education Association, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, the Fidelco Group, Johnson & Johnson, Georgian Court University, and by NJM Insurance Group. Promotional support provided by Insider NJ, and by New Jersey Globe. Hi, I'm Eric. You might see me as an ordinary person, but I've been living with a brain injury for nearly two years. One of my struggles is short-term memory loss. At Opportunity Project, I'm given hope and support and have gained my commerce back through the job placement program. Despite my challenges, I have a reason to keep improving. Today, even though life has changed me, I believe that anything is possible. If you have a brain injury, you don't have to face your road to recovery alone.